Today, we're going to find out if this budget monitor can stand up against this Atomo Shinobi monitor and also find out if I've gone too deep in this one. Like literally, like you'll see it towards the middle of the video. So let's find out. Hey, how's it going guys? Hope you guys are doing well and keeping up with what date is. If not, that's okay. I'll tell you, it's camera monitor review day. So unlike my opening line, I hope this monitor is actually decent because Andy Cine did send me this A6 Plus monitor. As with any brands I work with, I told them I'm always going to talk about the pros and cons and they were cool with that and these are the brands I like to work with. It's also a good time to review this monitor since these days we're in a situation where we have to film ourselves and monitor our own image. If you have never used a monitor like these and you're like, nah, say, I'm okay with trusting my camera and LCD for exposure. I like my video like how I like my chocolate. Dark. Um, stick around, I'll show you how to perfectly expose your skin using this monitor. Before I get into it, let's clarify what version of Andy Cine A6 this is. This is the Plus version 2. Version 1 doesn't have the USB-C power in port. There is also the A6 Lite instead of the Plus. And that one's even more budget friendly, but it's missing the touch screen and it's also like half an inch smaller. Now that's out of the way, I'm going to break down this comparison video in two parts. One is hardware and the other one is software. So let's first talk about the physical similarities and difference between these two monitors. Both of these support 4K resolution video signals, but the actual display is 1080p. It's an IPS display, so the viewing angle is great, but one is 8-bit and the other one's 10-bit. Okay, this one's kind of like a soft spot for Sony users like me. Yes, 10-bit has better color rendition. The biggest difference on this display, however, is the brightness. Shinobi is 1000 nit versus A6 Plus is about 450 nit. That was the biggest selling point for me when I was purchasing the Shinobi, since at the time I was filming a lot of outdoor stuff in like midday sun. Right now, not so much. Yeah, A6 Plus is still visible in the sun, just not as bright. I did take this outside at 12 o'clock when it was like sunny and it wasn't unusable. A6 Plus does come with this sunshade, so you can use it outdoors. Uh, I do like that A6 Plus does have a bigger screen. It's 5.5 inches versus 5.2 inches screen, but that extra 0.3 inches goes a long way. Both of these monitors take in the popular Sony MPF batteries, but the A6 Plus also supports the Canon LPE6 batteries in the same slot. If you own a lot of these Canon batteries, that's definitely a plus. So taking a look at all the ports on these two monitors, these are what they have. But the biggest difference is that the A6 Plus has an HDMI out. This is huge. It is a full-size HDMI port and this feature alone is letting me film on both monitors simultaneously with one camera like I'm doing right now. This is so useful since you can place two different monitors in different side of the room or even hook up a wireless transmitter and send the second feed to a monitor far away. You name it. Uh, it's just one big thing that I wish my Shinobi had. All these extra ports are probably what's making this A6 Plus a little heavier though. A6 Plus weighs 233 grams and Shinobi weighs 202 grams in real life. So that got me thinking, what's the inside quality like between these two? This is where I took the word in-depth review way too far. A6 Plus does have a sticker on top of the screw hole that says warranty void, but I wanted to open it for you guys so you don't have to lose your warranty. I don't know, I just like opening things up ever since I was a kid. So I did find some useful information though. Alright, so I won't geek about how A6 Plus has some good quality shielded 2 ohm inductors and how they secure the ribbon cable so it doesn't like pop out. You're probably like, oh gosh, he's gonna say flux capacitors next. But no, Shinobi Quarter 20 Threat actually has metal reinforcements. That means you could probably stack something heavier on top without the screw hole just snapping off. A6 Plus just has this plastic housing, but I do appreciate that A6 Plus has this third quarter 20 thread on the side in case you like to mount this on the side of your gimbal. You can with the Shinobi, but it's not easy. Uh, speaking of easy, this control wheel on the A6 Plus makes the quick navigation super easy. By default, turning the dial adjusts the brightness, but you can also navigate the quick menu really easily. To me, that's like having an air conditioning control knob in your car. These modern cars are missing all the dials and knobs. It takes forever to just turn down the air conditioning a notch. A6 Plus is like Honda Civic, whereas in Shinobi, it's like Tesla Model S. They both have touch screens, but it takes a lot of touching and submenu for Shinobi. So I find that A6 Plus is, yep, 
a lot more run and gun friendly. All right, so let's talk about the software feature differences. This is where both devices provide really good value. They both have focus peaking, false color, anamorphic mode, audio meter, waveform, 3D LUT imports, histogram, grids, zoom, vector scope, RGB parade. Whew, it's a freaking candy menu. To me, out of all of these, I use false color the most if it's accurate. So let's find out. You know how you just have to use your exposure meter or a histogram on your camera. You end up a lot of times overexposing or underexposing people's faces. You want to expose the face around 70% where 100% is clipping the highlights. If you look at these monitors, 70% exposure is marked as gray color and then 100% is marked as red. I know I've been indoors for like 40 days straight, but no, that's not my actual skin color. And yeah, right now, looks pretty good. And if I apply more lights to my face, guess what happens? Oh, well, blind, but it's probably red right now, right? Okay, cut. Woo, so yeah, both monitors have pretty accurate exposure scales and you probably noticed that I did pinch the zoom on the A6 Plus like it's year 2020. Unfortunately, you can't do that on the Shinobi. You do have to go through the menu to actually zoom in and zoom out to check your focus, which to me is not really very run and gun. Another cool feature I like to use is ability to import LUTs. Right now, I'm filming on Sony A6600, Picture Profile 10, LCL G3, BT2020. And I like to use James Miller's d G1 LUT. I did load it earlier, so let's see what that color looks like on these monitors. Alright, so on A6 Plus, you just double tap on the screen to get to the menu, and the LUT is over here, and uh, I'm gonna turn it on. Alright, that's pretty intense, but we're not gonna use 100% intensity, obviously. On the Shinobi, you go to the menu this way, and LUT, and on the slot one, I loaded the LUT. So if you look at the two monitors, I would say the Shinobi has a little bit more accurate color accuracy in terms of LUT colors. If you don't already have these 3 these LUTs loaded, you can use the pre-loaded log profiles. Here's where Shinobi says, I'm more professional. A6 Plus has support for Sony, Canon, and Panasonic, whereas in Shinobi supports that Plus, Fuji, Nikon, RED, RE, and JVC cameras. Someone's still using JVC cameras? You know what? Good for you, JVC. It's not that you can't use A6 Plus if you have one of those cameras. It's just that it doesn't have that exact profile like preloaded. And that's kind of like the theme with this Atomo Shinobi. It has the same features, but it's just very extra. It has eight times zoom on the vector scope. It has blue only exposure mode to like check noise. And it has seven different focus peaking color on like five like A6 Plus here. I mean, look at this. It has purple as one of the peaking colors. Whoa, I mean like this thing is made for Gerald Undone. If you got that joke, please comment in the comments below because you're a super video geek like me. <laughs> yeah. So if you're a huge Gerald Undone fan and must have that purple focus peaking color, yeah. I would totally recommend this Atomo Shinobi. But if you're just mostly doing like run and gun shoots indoors and need that HDMI out, yeah, A6 Plus is a really good monitor that can give you Atomo Shinobi run for its money because it is actually much cheaper. I'll leave a link to both of these products in the description below so you can check the most recent price. But right now it's about $80 and that's a plus for the plus. And if you haven't subscribed yet and love Gerald Undone and like camera gear reviews, please consider high-fiving that subscribe button down below. Because I'm about to drop some gear related videos that the internet has not seen yet. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. You guys are the best. Until next time, make it a good one.